Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, my wife and I have been watching American Conspiracy, The Octopus Murders. I think we're on part three. Um, it Again, I'm not going to do too much in terms of a spoiler alert, but it really doesn't matter because it's the you know, the evidence that matters, right? But it's about some sort of computer fraudulent... Um, well, they take this guy's software away from him. Uh, the American government does, the Defense Department. So a guy builds them. One of the first, it's, you know, in the 80s, it's during Reagan's administration when computers were just coming to be what they are now. And the American government steals the guy's um, company, basically. They steal his uh, source code, and he wins a you know the whole thing, and a reporter investigates this, and he comes up with these what they call the octopus murders, and it's a variety of things involving Iran Contra and so many different things, um, the beginning of digital spying, all the things that we now know. And a lot of it, you know, happened. Like, a lot of Iran-Contra was a scandal right under the Reagan administration and involves the CIA and just, um, you know, lots of murders and lots of cover-up and lots of, um, you know, because it's just a big conspiracy, a giant conspiracy. That's on Netflix. And, you know, like I said, I'm not going to go into all the details, but, you know, what they can't, prove factually and again we're not at the end of the thing we know that these things happen and it's easy for lefties and people on the democratic side because it's about a Reagan Republican type situation but it follows the CIA and the intelligence community which we know already did things like regime change all over the world and the CIA finally admitted to the stuff they did with the Iranians, when they destroyed Iranians and uh, destroyed Mossadegh, a democratically elected leader, in Operation Ajax, you know, they ruined Iran, right? And then this thing with the Iran hostages, which even as a little kid or whatever I was old in high school, I knew that was BS, like what happened with Iran, the Iranian hostages. When they released them as soon as Carter was done. You know, like, what, did they have a thing against Carter, Iran? They liked Reagan better than Carter? Like, I had these thoughts when I was a kid. You know, it was a scandal that cost Carter the the presidency. And that's all involved in this thing, right? But the main thing I want to talk about is, this is a mainstream, you know, Netflix, a lot of people are watching it, very believable, all-encompassing conspiracy that involves everything that you would say government shouldn't do and the intelligence, the intelligence shouldn't do, intelligence community the NSA, CIA, FBI, and they're all involved in it, right? National security, I mean, stealing something from a private American citizen and then using it to spy on allies and all these other things that are involved in this. And it's right there on Netflix. You know, Netflix is one of the most liberal, woke, I mean, most of their content sucks. Once in a while, they produce a good show, but their documentaries are relatively well done. And they're usually like one-sided, you know, they're not going to investigate Biden, say, or his son, Hunter. And maybe they will. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a Hunter-Biden documentary at some point. But what this thing, what this thing should do, just like the HBO uh, documentary Kill Chain, which was about election hacking, but they thought Trump was going to hack the election. And so they got into... And if you watch the documentary, it came out right before the election. And it slammed Dominion as being very hackable. The Dominion voting, electronic, you know, digital, uh, computerized voting machines. And, you know, that's for when they thought Trump was going to hack it. And the Democrats came in hard on this. And they were talking about election fraud. And they had been talking about election fraud under Hillary Clinton and all these things. But then when it went the other way, they pretended like, you know, you're election denier, right? And so, you know, these two documentaries that are on liberal based networks which they all kind of are document how conspiracies happen you know the drugs for money and selling drugs and you know the CIA has been selling drugs to American people they're responsible for the opioid epidemic 
they you know my brother once he was in vietnam guarded the poppy fields and there's images of this where you can see american soldiers guarding poppy fields which they make heroin out of you know the poppies in vietnam and of course the last two big wars the longest lasting wars was in afghanistan that didn't have any oil in vietnam that didn't have any oil but what they did have was opium and afghanistan is one of the best places to grow opium and when we were occupying afghanistan that's when the opioid epidem- epidemic happened you know there was a a spiritual practitioner a person who did the Sajmark system uh you know one of my facebook friends and somebody some guy i knew for a number of years and he had a you know bunch of people in a discussion people who do the meditation that he do he asked a question on facebook and usually i didn't get into these things this guy was a guy who was fought and you know was a, a part of a vietnam you know he was in vietnam um and he asked the question if the iraq war was about oil what's the afghanistan war about and i said well opium opium you know, a gram of opium is as value, valuable as a barrel of oil, right? I mean, it costs about the same. And it's a lot easier to produce and move. You know, oil's a nightmare to, you know, you're moving gallons upon gallons in these shipping tanks across the ocean, all these things. So when port oil, the cost of delivery is expensive, extraordinary. Where opium is, you know, next to nothing, right? I mean, it's because it's, you know, just volume alone. And you know i mean opium has a much powerful it was, it was as important oil as oil is to us opium is to those people who are addicted they'll do anything for it right and you know the evidence was there to support it there's a movie about this guy gary webb right he was a reporter who discovered that the cia was um moving drugs and there was another movie with um, tom cruise called american made with barry seal barry seal was moving drugs from uh you know, back and forth into America from Nicaragua or whatever these countries were, right? These countries that Reagan was heavily involved with. And so we know that the CIA has in the past, I mean, I have my brother who was in Vietnam guarding the poppy fields, and CIA was a presence there, like they were they were there. You know, he told me this story, wrote a book about it, you know, he had a, a book about his experience in Vietnam. And then, you know, these information came out about that, it's happened over and over again and the reason they do this is they run these programs you know these operations that they want off the books because everything the cia does that you know they can't claim is i mean first of all they have to get funding from the american government and you never know when you're going to get a senator or somebody else who's going to expose it right when you get funding public funding for something the chances of it coming out of what you've done are a lot higher than if you use drug money and you do it off the books. And so it can't be traced back to your organization. And then they use people like with the like Watergate and Nixon where you use Cubans, right? They use foreign operatives. Uh, the Kennedy assassination, right? These other things. They do things, you know, with Mossad or whatever it is. You know, joint operations. And so they get the money and funding from selling drugs to people, which is you know inherently evil right americans are being addicted people around the world being addicted to these drugs so the cia can run these evil operations that usually hurt one country or you know it's oppressive stuff whether it hurts americans or it's some kind of psychological operation or it's some kind of you know destabilization of a government and a leader people suffering you know it's evil like it's evil stuff and you know i've kind of reconciled this by saying they have to do evil things to keep the evil system going like it's not totally on them because if they didn't do some of these things sometimes they're just doing crazy stuff like watergate was unnecessary like some of the things in watergate wasn't the worst thing that was ever done but they do stupid things that are just out of their own paranoia this has happened with the intelligence community forever where they get you know some kind of a you know a, they get an insulated isolated group that gets paranoid and does something that didn't need to be done but some of the things that they do just to keep the dollar afloat just to keep the you know the petrodollar going and the american economy going and the military industrial complex going by creating wars is to keep this system moving 
because if the truth was there, the system would collapse. The system should have collapsed already. They're keeping the inevitable collapse of the system at bay. You know, it's like some kind of dark magic where you're, they're keeping something artificially alive through, you know, some sort of, you know, demonic practice, right? You know, some, you know, they're animating a corpse. And so, you know, it's not 100% on them because everybody wants to keep the system going whether they want it or not. Things are going to get really bad once the system collapses. Like you take an evil government and you destroy that government, and we've seen it done. The CIA has done that, right? Destroying a government, destroying Iran, you know, this government that was there. And that wasn't a bad government. Mossadegh was a, a moderate, you know, a, a moderate person. He wasn't an extremist. They took him out, and now they have a much worse situation. Iran is much worse by every definition, right? But America has taken down one leader after another, one government after another, and the place always is, is a much worse, right? So as bad as a government can get, it keeps some semblance of order that when a government isn't there, it's worse. And so all these people, all these conspiracy theorists, all these people who are so-called truthers, that think, oh, we just got to take the government down. Yeah, then what? Like just people being people with no restrictions, with no rule of law? You know, as much as a police state, police state is a bad thing, it's better than the alternative. I mean, not eventually. Eventually, people can rise up. I mean, it's all about people rising up to a higher level. And that's going to either happen or not. Like I talk about, only spirituality will save this world. It means people connecting to God and no longer needing external rules and laws to discipline them because they're just good people, right? They're just saintly people that wouldn't even think about doing evil stuff right but right now we're so far away from that people have been degraded and the system that is there keeps the degradation in check to some extent at least from the majority of people it's an evil system but it is you know keeping some restrictions on evil keeping some tabs on evil right uh so there's that but in terms of what this means when they say crazy conspiracy theorists well, if the octopus diaries, and at least they're very partially true, right? I mean, some of the things are, you know, they're not going to prove everything that they think about it, right? But the evidence is fairly overwhelming that this was a major conspiracy and scandal, like so many other things that have been proven before. Assassinations and, you know, all these things. The government has covered up. The government and the CIA have done bad things including running drugs and getting money from drugs and doing operations that they don't want you to know about. So they have to use drug money, right? Which is a big part of this whole thing. And so everything that's covered in here, the complex nature and the, it's called the octopus murders because it's multiple different scandals and conspiracies that are, that are going on, right? You know, but this idea of them calling you crazy conspiracy theorists, if your government is willing to do the worst possible things, do them over and over again, then you can't say there's crazy conspiracy theorists. You might be wrong. You might not get the conspiracy right. You might be stupid, but there are conspiracies. Like, there's a word for it. I say this all the time. And they actually happen. And the biggest problem to a conspiracy theory is that people say, no way people would get away with that, or no way people would be that evil to do that. But they are that evil when you see what's happened here. And this one and so many other ones that have been proven. And so when they say, oh, you're just a crazy conspiracy theorist, well, no, it's because you guys are liars and you're the worst possible people, people that run the system, and you do horrible things, and then you say that we're the problem, we're the ones that have the dysfunction because we you know, see through or, or know that you're doing bad things, right? You know, what do your friends tell you? Oh, oh that would never happen. Oh, there, there's no way they would get away with that. Oh, there's no way that people would would do such horrible things but once you get past well you know yes they would then the evidence speaks for itself right once you realize people do these things all the time you know people have kept other people as slaves people are murdering people all the time people are doing evil things all the time governments religions and then covering it up it just happens people do horrible things and it's kind of our like sort of our one of our signature aspects of what human beings are about and so there's no crazy conspiracy theorists because people are just bad. 
and bad people conspire to do bad things, right? <laughs> the only way Kamala Harris gets to be president is if Joe Biden gets reelected and he's ruled that he can't, you know, something happens where he has to uh, retire or he dies. So it's a very real possibility, right? She has more at stake than probably anybody because she sucks. She's unelectable on her own. But she could be president, and she'd be the first woman president, allegedly, <laughs> if she, um, you know, if Biden wins. She has a good chance. Like, this is basically her running for president, her getting a chance to be president. So she has a lot at stake here, more than anybody else, right? I don't think anybody else has more at stake with Joe Biden being able to keep it together. Because no way she beats Trump or anybody else on her own. Nobody likes her, even the Democrats, right? And so let's keep that in mind here as she lies. Madam Vice President, thank you for being with us. Polls show that most Americans say President Biden is too old for a second term. Did he answer those questions last night? He was absolutely on fire, and he answered any question that anyone might have about how passionate he is, how prepared he is, how principled he is to take on. The thing about age is, and you know, I'm getting older, like I'm going to be 60 this year, which is kind of almost hard for me to believe. Like I believe it <laughs> because I feel like I've lived 60 years, but in terms of how I feel physically at all these things, um, you know, it's harder to believe. But as you get older, you're losing things. It happens when you're in your 40s and then from there on out. You lose things and you might get them back, but it's only partially. You understand this? Things just don't work as well physically, mentally, whatever it might be. And you're in the process of losing, like you're gaining your abilities as a kid, right? You're increasing your abilities. You're learning to do things. You learn to walk, you learn to talk, you learn to ride a bike, you learn to whatever it is, right? Your mind's getting better, you're learning in school, you're learning and you're, you're getting new abilities and skills and things and physical abilities and you get stronger and better and all these types of things, right? And then as you hit your, like sort of basically your, whatever your middle point in your life is, in your late 30s, 40s, whatever, 50s, if those people live in a, to 100, you are on the decline. Now you're in a process where you're losing things that you once had, right? You might be gaining some things in terms of wisdom and knowledge and, you know, spiritual capacity. I mean, you can gain a lot on the spiritual field. You can connect to God in deeper, deeper levels as you can become more mature and you're more settled, you know, and some of the obligations and some of your life is lived and some of your some scars are burned off and things like this, right? Your impressions and things that you have to live through. So you can still evolve, but it's on a spiritual level. On a material level, you're just losing things, right? And you might have good days, like I said before. You might have a good phase. You might have a good few months where you regain something you've lost in, to some extent, and you're able to like sort of regain some youth and energy, and you, you start doing things again that you thought, oh, I, I might not be able to do that again, and you can do it again. You're like, good. You know, it's like remission, right? But you can't be judged by your good days. And that's the thing, especially if you have a job that takes a lot of responsibilities. You can't be judged by the good days that you have. You only can be judged by the worst days because like somebody who's glitching out like Mitch McConnell or has all these gaffes and things, you know, the evidence of Joe Biden's age isn't his good days, it's his bad days, right? He can't be judged by, and it wasn't like he had a good performance here. They lowered the standards. They probably gave him whatever drugs he was on to, you know, amp up his performance, right? I mean, he's being monitored all the time because of his health. And he performed better than, you know, they lowered the expectations. And he performed better than he usually does. But it still sucked. It was still a bad performance. It still showed that he was old, right? And... Of course, she's going to lie about it because she's Kamala Neepads Harris, and she def desperately wants a, a back door into the White House, right? I mean, she's already gotten one. Like, she shouldn't be VP. She polled at less than 1% among Democrats. Like, Democrats don't like her. And certainly the rest of the world doesn't like her either, right? And so this is her one shot. 
second term as president. And I thought that he did a spectacular job. He hit a number of important issues that I think are on the minds of the American people. One, answering the question about what do we stand for? Who are we? And what kind of country do we want to live in as Americans? So he started that conversation by talking about history and the role of the United States of America when it comes to standing with our friends like she got, she's got got a very annoying tone to her voice. I don't know if it's nasal or... History, history, talk to me, history, and then you, you did a good job of designing the conversation. I mean, she's very, you know, annoying. But it's clear, like, you know, we saw what happened. We've seen the guy. The guy's old. He's a bit old for... He was too old to run in 2019. He shouldn't have been president for the last four years. And really, he hasn't been president, right? They roll him out, they hand him an ice cream cone, and then he just does whatever his handlers tell him to do. Ukraine and doing the right thing. He talked about our accomplishments that we, again, with not one Republican voting for it, were able to cap the cost of insulin for our seniors at $35 a month. We've $39 a month. Cap the cost of prescription medication for seniors at $2,000 a year. And in $2,000 a year. In the second term, we intend to have that cap apply to everyone, not just our seniors. I thought he did a spectacular job. I mean, it's spectacular. It's spectacular. No one would say that, right? Okay, just a few more things to cover here. I had this up on my toolbar. I believe it's a Kamala gaffe. Because when we think about the strength of our democracy, you know, I think that there's a duality to the nature of democracy. When it's intact, oh, it's so strong in terms of what it does to uphold and protect individual rights and freedoms. So strong in its nature. And it's very fragile. It will only be as strong as our willingness to fight for it. Because when... The caption on this was, does she do shots before every public spot? <laughs> she seems a little bit on the tipsy side. Musicians pull out of SXSW in support of Palestine due to defense industry ties. Uh, update March 8th. The list of artists boycotting official SCXSW over the festivals are Proper, Mercy, Lemon, Gel. These are two different. It's not Lemon Gel. It's Lemon slash uh, comma gel. And um, have pulled out so it says here, multiple artists have dropped out of this concert thing here in support of Palestine due to the fest festival's connections to the defense industry the U.S. Army exhibits at the festival in Collins Aerospace and a company under defense contractor RTX, formerly Raytheon, is participating at this year's event. So they're pushing uh, military stuff at these concerts, which they do at football games. And this person wrote, I've decided to pull out of my official out of my official SXW showcases in protests of SCX ties to the defense industry and in support of the Palestinian people. Um, you know, the, the problem for Israel and the Jewish narrative of victimization that's always there is that it cr it's crumbled during this period of time, right? When you act in this way and like I said, they don't really have a choice if their goal is to eventually recover the promised land, right? What they consider the promised land. A woman is marrying an AI hologram, ushering in a weird new era of human-robot relationships. Um, it sounds kind of like, does the hologram get a choice? And <laughs> so... Um, the AI hologram was trained on data related to Alicia Faris's Farris, previous romantic partners. An, art, an artist plans to marry an AI hologram. The artist previously had a relationship with a mannequin named Pierre. Um, yeah, they don't have names. <laughs> Mannequins. Um, you know, for sane people. But there's um, no picture of them here. Here is the picture here. She's... Um, a real person and here's her hologram fiance who again what choice does he have in the matter okay so I'm in the editing portion we've seen this before people marrying themselves like that's a big thing that's happened in I think Japan you know people are married having a marriage themselves a woman dresses up in a wedding dress to marry herself or whatever 
Uh, but it's, you know, people who want to have the illusion of something but aren't psychologically stable or emotionally stable or both enough uh, to have a relationship with a real other significant other, right? People who can't be in a relationship that would result in a lifelong commitment or marriage and can't attract somebody to themselves because they suck so bad or they, you know, they date people but they're unmarriable, right? <laughs> because they're, they're horrible people, right? You know, they'll Seinfeld their way out of whatever situation and not be able to make a, a commitment and, you know, um, because of, usually it's, it's some form of selfishness. The reason people are single is because either they want to be single or because of selfish type behaviors that won't allow them to, to fully function in a relationship or they want things. There's another article, I didn't, I didn't cover it, but it was the unrealistic, um, profile that women in New York are creating they want a husband with a six figure income and a six pack abs and you know like three other things you know like you just you're not going to be able to find somebody like that right you know people have higher standards for other people and so either some people aren't good enough for them or they you know they're just so miserable and difficult to be with that no one really was going to want to marry them right something like that and so, or they just really want to be single and that's, you know, that's their thing. And if that's the thing, then fine, you know, if you want to be single. But other than that, you know, it's, I mean, if you, you can't marry a robot, right? <laughs> like, like it's just saying that you suck and you're, you know, you're not lovable. You're not capable of having a real relationship. And it's, you know, it's more and more the case. More and more the case, people just can't, because of their poor training and their, you know, whatever's going on internally, they just can't be with somebody else. They can't sustain a marriage. And as this younger generation grows up, it's going to be more and more the case. Like marriage is like a, a dying institution. King Charles' cancer diagnosis highlights the long waiting times, long waiting times many people in the UK face because of their bogus health care system. Um, not for Charles, though. He got right in. This guy here, no, not this guy, this guy. <laughs> this sad sack m and for here. Joan DeWitt, that time the Dutch people ate their prime minister. Um, Duchess took eat the rich literally at this time. The Dutch may have, they may have, the Dutch may seem civilized now, but anyone with some knowledge of European history knows that was not always the case in the past. Europe, including the Netherlands, was not an easy place to live back in the day. The content was ravaged by wars, conflict, and assassinations, a complete geopolitical mess. One story from the past that exemplifies this was a tragic tale of Johan de Witt, an especially dark chapter in Dutch history. In 1672, the Netherlands, known as the Dutch Republic back then, was caught up in a war with England, France, two German cities of Colonia and Munster, named after the cheese. This year must enter the Dutch history books as the the um, disaster year, which marked the end of the Dutch Golden Age. The people were rational and the government helpless, and the country was beyond salvation. Johan de Witt was the unlucky prime minister at the time for almost 20 years. He also he was one of the only non-royal leaders in all of Europe. This displeased many Dutch citizens who disliked him and would have rather seen famous William III of the House of Orange, Nassau, take up office. The House of Orange was the closest thing the Republic had to a royal family at the time. This is the guy here. Johan de Witt, on the other hand, alongside a strong and wealthy merchant class, represented Republican interests. De Witt had been governing the Dutch city of Dordrecht since medieval times and the powerful family held high political positions all over Netherland. Here's his downfall. Let's just get to the part where he's, they eat him. So his brother was, um, his brother Cornelius was arrested for treason, taken to a prison in Hague, now a museum, and tortured. As a custom at the time, torture was a normal part of imprisonment, used as a means to force a confession out of those convicted. Surely it really didn't matter if the confession was true or not, as long as the person confessed whoever the torture 
was considered justified. The crowds do what crowds do best, they should say mob. Lose all sense of sanity, according to some reports, the two brothers were stripped naked, mutilated, and had their livers removed and eaten. They were eating their livers. Um, sort of like a Krampus. It sounds like, <laughs> sort of like a Krampus thing. And so anyways, you know, that this is what the people who run the world fear, right? These are the, what anybody in power fears that they're, you know, going to be eaten, right? <laughs> like this is what mobs do, and it's happened over and over again. People turn on their leaders inevitably when things go wrong. So if my calculations are correct, this is only 352 years ago, right? 2,000 years ago, they not only crucified Jesus, but the, if you read what happened to each one of Jesus' apostles, the way they were tortured and mutilated, I mean, just people were evil. Like, you know, just uh, the things that people have come up, to do, come up with to do to other people, including all these weapons of mass destruction. I mean, people love killing other people and torturing them even more so killing them in some way and making other people suffer you know think about the people you've known in your life that just get enjoyment out of making other people suffer i mean there's like lots of people like i've known who find some twisted you know emotional suffering they're not torturing people but on an emotional level or you know just um manipulative deceptive level and so that's what human beings do they torture and hurt and you know mutilate other people physically emotionally whatever tear people down i mean just like so much hate and so much suckiness and the people who run the country they run the world you know it's only so many years before i mean it's only 300 years that's nothing 350 years for just this story there's so many stories like this the vikings the the people out there were just so brutal and you know killed people without any thought of anything right I mean, life was so much cheaper, and life is cheap now. It's just there's kind of an illusion of, you know, there's some preservation of life. But, I mean, the way that people murder, not just, you know, other people, but they murder trees and animals and, you know, don't mind killing stuff without any thought of, like, you know, this idea that human beings can do whatever they want, right? Manifest destiny. And so that's as much of a problem as anything else. Like, people having just... um you know, it's killing without thinking it through, right? Killing without any sort of reservation. And that could be for food or anything like this, right? Food's one thing. But then you have just, you know, the destruction, like destroying things and not thinking it through, right? Cutting giant redwood trees down. Like it's just these magnificent trees and just having no sense of anything. Like just low level, low consciousness, low vibration, right? Like murdering a whale, like something like that. You know, like something that's clearly a, a higher level of consciousness, right? These various animals. But anyways, you know, that's human beings. Mark, safe from Joe. This is, um, you know, one of my viewers had sent me a, you know, a video of Joe Biden talking to the people in Oklahoma about their fires and that certain kind of roofs. Um, you know, it was a gaff in itself. But I missed the part about the blue roofs because I told my wife about it. She goes, oh, yeah, that blue roof thing. And then a bunch of people commented, you know, people think that I'm going to remember everything, right? People think that, you know, just because I cover this, like I, you know, I'm an encyclopedia and I just, there's just so many things that happen that I cover on a daily basis, all the BS over the years. And, you know, it's there somewhere in my system, but I don't necessarily remember to pull it up, right? I just, um, like, I want to do a better job of using my memes again. You <laughs> know, Some of the memes were great. I just got out of the habit of doing that. Uh, but, like, it's just all the things to remember. Like, I may have to remember all the memes I have, and, like, there's just too many to to focus on. Like, I have a meme probably for every video I could use. But unless I focus on it, you know, there's times I'm like, oh, well, I could have used that meme there, right? But I'm just not. You know, there's so much going on all the time, now more than ever. And this thing that happened in Hawaii was a big story. And the idea was that all the celebrity rich people Oprah Winfrey's and the Mark Zuckerberg's and people painted their roofs blue and that prevented the laser that started the fires from you know whatever that was the revealing theory out there and I don't know whether it's true or not you know it's just something that's there and every time there's wildfires people think they're started by lasers you know I was talking about this with my wife 
there's wildfires in this in this west part of the country, Texas, all the way up through you know Washington State, you know through Colorado. I mean, all all the stuff on the you know the left side of the uh, the west side of America. Fires are a big deal because of the it's dry there. They have these ponderosa pines that are like you know like giant matchsticks, and they have lots of uh, you know this sap that burns. If you ever burn soft woods they have all this stuff sap and things like this that are you know flammable and are add to it very dry wood and they have this underbrush and so I lived in places you know I lived in uh, New Mexico there was this smoke that came in from fires that were happening in Texas and then there's fires all the way up through California we know about this and whether they're intentional or not it's something that nature does like whether it's you know if some of them are intentional whatever it might be. Uh, now there's all these cattle ranches going up. But it's just, you know, you can't keep track of all the... the Because nothing ever gets held accountable for. Like, you, you know, this octopus diary thing. The octopus murders. No one's going to go to jail. I mean, it, you know, people are like, oh yeah, that's all true. And we're, you know, we're vindicated to some extent, conspiracy theorists, you know, truthers. Because we always end up being the you know the good ones of us who are right most of the time we end up being vindicated in one way or way or another but it's maybe it becomes kind of an accepted truth but nobody goes to jail and nothing changes and this is what i've talked about before and so it just stuff just keeps on being rolled out time and time again and then just nothing happens or comes of it right and that's the times we live in so it's you know impossible to keep up with all the things you know, because they just go by the wayside. Like, no one's talking about Hawaii now. Unless something comes back up with these other fires and they bring back Hawaii. And, you know, they focus. people are focusing on the lasers and the blue roofs and not, like, prosecuting the criminals or whatever it might be, gathering, you know, evidence. You know, if there are these blue, these lasers that are, you know, somehow don't work on blue painted roofs or somehow you, they're not targeted because of it, whatever it is. Um, you know, that is whatever it is. Like, that's true or not true. But it's kind of off-putting to the normal people, the sheeple. And either way, no one's going to do anything about this to bring it to bring, bring uh, the guilty to justice. It's just there's no system or rule of law anymore because there's just one scandal after the other, one conspiracy after the other. And then there's stuff on the left, there's stuff on the right, and they just keep on rolling these things out and nothing ever... You know, there's no resolution to any of these stories, right? Like, people find out information, and then there's these theories that come out of the, you know, the information and facts that are available, and then something new happens, and everybody moves on to that. And as long as that's the case, there's never going to be any accountability. And there really won't be, because accountability would bring down the system, right? True accountability, it would go across the board. Like, if you're going to hold the Biden family accountable... Then you're going to have to hold the banks accountable. You're going to have to hold the military-industrial complex accountable, and then the media accountable because they didn't report on these. You know, it just goes down the. You know, the the scandal would wipe out the whole power structure, and then there's all these you know ties between other scandals and things that are comparative. You're like, well, if you're going to hold these people accountable, you got to hold these people accountable, and so it goes. You know, where just everything comes out, and then everybody's in jail. You know. And so there's just, you know, the whole system collapses because there's no, you know, there's no faith in any part of the system anymore. That's why conspiracy theorists, truthers are the biggest threat to the system because truth would bring the system down. Anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse. In the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.